Hey guys, and welcome to another City Extra podcast. I'm Lewis, and this guy over here is... Johnny Poddy. Johnny Poddy. Hope everyone's doing all right. Uh, if you are new to the channel, uh, please hit that subscribe button with the notification bell turned on to smash the like on the video if you listen to it on YouTube. Um, if you listen to it as a podcast, hello to all of you OGs. Um, pretty good timing, actually, isn't it? Because we timed this really well, We actually. have timed it really well, because literally, what, three hours ago, Caldoon's part one interview come out. I, You know what? soon as the season ends, I actually forgot about it, but it is like, it is one of the best things, isn't it? It's one of my highlights. That one, of the, one of the things I look forward to when the season ends, first is transfers, and the second is seeing that interview because it's so sick. We have the best chairman in football. Yeah. In world football, our chairman is the best and I do not I do not doubt that at all. Mm. There's no like, doubt in my brain that says, oh, they've got a good chairman, you know what I mean? Mm. Our chairman's sick. Yeah, he is, man. So yeah, he's, he said quite a few, a, a, quite a few bits in the in the um, in the interview, and obviously there's three more parts to come. So you know, the next couple of podcasts as well, we can we can go over them. But just before we get to that, I want to talk about Zinchenko and what's been oh, going no. on with him. Oh, no. Yeah, because you know, some city fans are saying, oh, if you, if you don't know what we're on about, Zinchenko's wife now, because yeah. I think they got married, aren't they? Yeah, his wife. Now. Um, basically, come out and slated Pep for his tactics. And basically some City fans and, you know, people in the media have been saying, shouldn't be doing that. You know, your Which your, is right though. Your husband plays for City, you shouldn't you should, you know, whatever, whatever. Um some City fans have been like, well, she's got a right to opinion, everyone's got a right to opinion. And like people have been like sort of, you know, debating whether or not Shijenko's wife should come out and slate Pep. You know, well, whether she's right or wrong. So Zinchenko's released a statement yesterday or was that this morning? This morning. This morning. So, okay, mint timing again. And he's basically come out and he's sort of defended her, but then at the same time... Throw her under the bus. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, he's come out and said, she's a fan, she goes to all the home games and away games, which is effectively him saying she has a right to opinion because she's a fan, right? But then also he said... She shouldn't have. Yeah, he's, he's a bit of a wishy-washy one, right? So... What's your view on this, first of all? Was well, was his wife, you know, was his wife... It's weird that we're talking about wives, isn't it? But is, is it right? Should should she should she be able to give her opinion? Just like, we, we can slate Pep. We've slated Pep before on, on the Leon tactics. So what's the difference? But is is it right that she should be able to... Yeah, I think, I think as well, it is taken out of context a little bit because apparently the the way that it is actually was... She was actually laid down on some bit, I think, and just talking just casually. Whereas people... Because because you read it so blankly, it's black and white to people, and it they just see it as text on like on a word document or whatever it is. You know what I mean? They just see the text of it on a tweet, mm. and they take it as like they can take it into whatever context they want. Mm. And in reality, she was sat there just having a chill conversation. It was, it was not. It wasn't malicious from her. Mm. She was just saying her thoughts as a fan, and that's what Zinchenko is getting to. She is a fan. However, being that close yeah. to a footballer, I think the smart decision to be that close to footballer is to keep your mouth shut in them situations because mm. that could hinder on Zinchenko, her coming out like that and saying stuff like that because mm. it can be... Yeah, you ha As a footballer's wife, you have to be aware of the other people's... Uh, like, the way they'll take it. So, like... Because yeah. she's so close to Zinchenko. Obviously, it's his wife and he's, he's a, a player for City. It's too close mm. to be... If it was, like, Zinchenko's, like, cousin or something has come out, no one would be really be happy. I think it's his wife... Mm. It's very much like, ah, as if you come out. And also, yeah. people kind of get this opinion that Zinchenko's gone off that and then ranted to his wife. Yeah. And now she's like relaying that onto everyone else, which I don't think mm. is the case. Yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because I happen to agree with what she said. You yeah, know? Oh, she's right. She's, she's right. right with the I'm pep tactics and stuff yeah. like that. He shouldn't have done that. Like, which we've said before, mm. he shouldn't have just changed up on this random mask. And she is right. Mm. But... <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's, it's the, so the, the, strange. The, the issue is that it makes it awkward for Zinchenko and Pep. Then, isn't it like, well, it seems like obviously they can just be men and just come up to each other and just say, "All right, Pep, FYI, my wife said that, but well, you know, it is what it is." No it? You know what I mean? Me, no. I, I, you know, I'm backing you, whatever. And he said that in his statement, but Pep's not a guy that you want to get on the wrong side of, and anything can do that. It can be anything, you know. It doesn't have to be you. And I feel that Pep. When he's when he's assessing a player to be at the club for the season, he's he's assessing everything. He's assessing: is this player gonna give me a headache? 
And no matter what the problem is, if the answer to that is there may be a headache with this player, unless you are world class, he's probably going to let you go. Do you know the charts when it says like if yes, like the yes and no thing yeah, yeah. go down the thing. Like Pep definitely goes through one of them in his head, mm. and one of them things is it like will this guy stress me out? If yes, carry on. If yeah, no, yeah. go back to beginning. No, I mean that's exactly what it is yeah. because. That's exactly what he does, isn't it? He assesses their personalities, which is why Nathan Ake is a really good signing and Pep will be loving that because mm. apparently he has a really good personality. We see that, innit? Mm. I came out and thanked Bournemouth and he's quite mm. classy. At that. And obviously, he seems like the kind of player who won't give Pep a headache. Yeah. Um, I think potentially it backfired with Yao Cancelo. I, I don't, he probably thought that wouldn't be a headache and then it kind of turned out to be, but then they've sorted it out now, haven't they? Mm. Which proves that there is, you know, you can, you can, you can fix. sort you can sort, sort it out, you know what I mean? And to be fair, it'd be pretty poor if, if Pep didn't, if it's like one mistake and then you're out. I don't think Pep's that type of guy, but the fact is that Sinchenko's form at the end of the season, you know, he made if he made a few mistakes. He's not been the best this season. He, you know, his, his other seasons have been good. And I don't blame him for that, by the way. He's been in and out of the team with injuries um, and it is difficult. But yeah, I'm just thinking, I, I was thinking anyway, before this came out, Zinchenko's time might be up. Yeah, we said this, didn't we? We yeah. said this in our transfer. And, and now with this added stuff, I'm just thinking that Pep's just going to be like, I just don't want to keep this guy. It's ammo, in it? It's more So ammo. we'll just have to say, it's a real shame whatever happens, because, you know, whatever happens with Zinchenko, he's been a really good servant to the club oh, for, for the three, been, four years that he's been playing. And He's been, he's been there with like the Delft kind of thing, where he's, he's mm. filled in in a position that he, that he doesn't play, and he's smashed it. I'll be sad to it. see him go for Dusseldorf. Oh, however. definitely. I mean, do you remember when he was going to sign for Wolves? Mm. And he said, nah, I'm going to stay and fight for his place. Good job he did stay and fight for his place because we needed him massively. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny about his statement as well, how he's weeding. <laughs> oh, weeding, yeah. He's weeding his garden, isn't he? Like, yeah. It's like he took time out of his day weeding to, to sort out his <laughs> yeah. statement. Yeah, it's funny that. It's funny that. But yeah, that was just uh, that was just something that some people have been talking about. So we thought, why not cover it on a podcast? Let's move on then to the actual interview then, um, which is the Caldoon interview. If you've not seen it, it's on City's official YouTube channel, I think. Uh, yeah, it's on, on, it's on the, the YouTube channel on the website. Yeah, he does, um, he does one every year and this year's a four-parter, an hour long uh, with the same guy. Is he called Chris, the guy who interviews him? Chris Bailey. Chris Bailey, that sounds yeah. legit, yeah. Um, and to be fair, it's, it's, I, quite, I like it because even though it's an internal interview, you know, led by someone who's employed by the club um, and obviously Caldoun who works for the club and represents the club, Chris doesn't hold back no no he'll, he'll ask whatever he, and he does he does ask questions you know what I mean which is right otherwise it's pointless doing it yeah, we it's a pointless we'll, interview we we'll won't be fed yeah. mindless stuff we want to we know stuff innit mm. yeah so let, let's come to a few things first let's talk about I liked how he, he asked about he directed and this is what I mean by asking tough questions he said that he basically asked Caldoun you know what was the conversation at the end of the season with Pep because clearly it wasn't a good season yeah I like that I like that um, and, and and I like I like Caldoun and the reason I like Caldoun is because he's a born winner. He's yeah. a winner and he says that and he says actually the thing that, that's similar between Caldoun and Pep is that they, they both want to win. And he says that, you know, he, he wants to win and it, it is a disappointment and they're not gonna beat around the bush. They, they they probably got together at the end of the year and 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 sat down and said, This season wasn't right. What was the reasons? X, Y, Z. These are all the reasons, right? And some yeah. of them would have been Pep's fault. Some of them might have been the board's fault. Some of them might... And you know what I mean? Because there's, there's errors everywhere, right? And they say, right, well, obviously Pep's not getting sacked. So what do we need to do to move this forward? And, and that's what I like. They're, they're very open. They're very honest. And, and that's why our club's one of the best run clubs in the world is because everyone just is honest with each other. Everyone's like, they're not holding anything back. So like... From Carl Dune to the manager, it's a very much open relationship, and I feel like that's how football it should be. It works. We can see that it works, and then we're seeing that, and then the openness with the fans that we get, like with these interviews that we get, it's very, it's, it's a nice flowing kind of relationship. And then when you say about Pep and him being born winners, that's right. And then they definitely sat down together because they both want the same thing. Mm. They both want to achieve the same goal, and that's what he's saying, isn't it? So we, they were both probably the exact same like with each other. Do you know what I mean? They were both like, yeah, this is wrong. And Pep would have been the exact same with him saying, right, this, this we didn't do well with this, we didn't do well with this. And they're probably going at it. Do you know what I mean? Not arguing with each other, but saying where things went wrong and where. We and it won't just be on season. the pitch, by the way. Pep can Pep can can legitimately say, by the way, that cast stuff had a massive effect. Yeah, definitely. He could turn around and say that that 
was really derailed, tricky. It's been yeah. tricky since it ever it ever got leaked years two years ago, whenever it was, because that has been a massive pain in the ass. I've had non-stop questions. Players have been talking about it in training when they should be focusing because that would have been happening. Yeah, definitely. So it would have been like, what well, oh, are you going to get off? If it's- yeah, and obviously I'm not saying it's Caldoun's fault, but I'm saying at the end of the day, that's that's Caldoun's job is to manage that side of the business, is to manage the off off field activities. And at the end of the day, whilst yes, they were successful in the end in getting rid of the allegations, you know, the length of time it took to get to that point, Pep can look at them and go, that had an impact on us. Yeah, definitely. All right. So that's that. So let's move on then to the transfer bit. So this is the exciting part yeah. because he's come out and said basically, obviously, again, Chris asking him about asking him upfront questions about transfers and stuff and the strategy of transfers. Mm. So then Calderon's like comes out and he says. Uh, if you look at the past four or five seasons, mm. look at the players that we've signed, they're all in the bracket of the 20 to 25-year-old players, yeah. which is like, obviously, we've signed Nathan Ake and we've signed Ferran Torres, we've signed Gabriel Jesus. You know what I mean? These kind of players, they're, they're the main bracket. Mm. He said, but that doesn't mean that, and he's smart by saying this, he said, because that doesn't mean that they're the only players we're going to go for. If Pep comes up to him and says, we need this person because this person is going to improve us massively, I don't care whether he fits in the 20, 20 25 bracket, he breaks that. <laughs> Then he's like, yeah, they're willing to go out of their kind of normal mm. like zone to get someone who's world class, and then that's exciting. That and I feel like that alludes to Koulibaly a little bit. I feel like mm. that's kind of like a little bit because obviously Koulibaly is now is he twenty nine? Twenty nine, yeah. Yeah, so he's twenty nine, and obviously he breaks that. Mm. Uh, people could say it alludes to Messi because he breaks that, <laughs> mm. but I think the key thing that everyone's picking up on is he he says that the players. Like he yeah. says, there's more players coming in, which means that people will be like, oh, is that about Koulibaly? But no, the players, there's more than one. There was an S on the end, which was crucial. I picked on that straight away. And, you know, it's it's interesting because we were speaking last night, weren't we? We was here and Bossman Freddy was here. And Bossman Freddy said, he doesn't think we'll sign anyone after Koulibaly. And I said, no. And yeah, we both said, we, we, we have I to. said, we, I think I think we like, I still think that if we sign Koulibaly, and, and the reason I say that is because we're signing Koulibaly, right, as, as a defender. As a, and I've, as a, we've referenced this before on the pod and on, on the streams and stuff in that he can defend that's why we're buying him because all our previous centre halves they've sort of all been like nice on the ball type pet players but we have, we're signing Kulabali now because we need a defender so then I refer back to the left left back situation and go Kyle Walker can defend Kulabali can defend Laporte can defend Mendy can't defend and we don't have another left back you know what I mean, if we get any, if Angelino comes back, he isn't the best at defending. Shinchenko, you no, know, he's you know he's, he's he's not a left back, and Cancelo's a right back. For me, it seems a little bit pointless, and this is why I think we might sign a left back. In fact, no, I'm ninety percent sure we will sign a left back because to me, it makes no sense in saying go get Kudelbali because we need to be able to defend, and then playing Ben Mendy at left back in a game where we might be forced to defend. As I've said this, we need a. Def- I think we need a left back who can just who's really good at defending and and, and and this is why on the live stream the other day I shouted out that Lucas Digne at Everton because he's, he's decent going forward and he's got a good left foot on him and he's, he's got a, a few free kicks but he's decent at defending and I'm not saying he's better than Mendy I'm not saying that at all but what I'm saying is I'd like to have a slightly different option to Mendy because 95% of our games were against teams that aren't as good as us who are going to defend and, and that's fine play play men and, and, and even we'll see uh, I think next season anyway, I think we will see three at the back mm. when we have teams that are so then for, that's good for Mendy to come in in then games but like you're saying when we're playing against teams where we do need to actually defend that's where we we fall down isn't it like mm. look at the teams that like put pressure on us when Tottenham when they were putting pressure on us we kind of crumbled a bit and Mendy crumbled and then when um when Liverpool come and they come at us heavy in it you know what I mean mm. they're relentless Liverpool you need to be able to defend mm. but we can't defend that's been our issue all season that's why I'm fully with you we need to sign a left back and we need to sign a left back that can defend we have a ball play. we have, we have a guy who's attacking the, like fine a left back don't mind if he can mm. be fit he's good attacking we've seen it if he can get back to his best that's sick but we need someone who can defend imagine having a boat right oh, here we go here we go <laughs> imagine having a boat and you got cracks in it and it's sinking, yeah? You got two cracks, right? And the water's coming through. Fix the cracks. Right? So you fix a crack, permanent fix, yeah? And you're buzzing. That's a cool value, right? Yeah, that's cool value who's coming. So you're buzzing, you're like, yes. City can't then go, right, well, we've fixed that crack. That one, 
we'll just leave it and then it, we won't sink we'll be alright water's because come in but a lot crap. slower it's, yeah. a lot slower. it's a smaller crap like it's a lot this. slower I like what, what's the point how much did you pay for the boat by the way a bit dodgy if you got two crabs yeah, it's a dodgy boat I, a I had it in my shed for a long time <laughs> <laughs> so so what what I'm saying is like, what's the point say you, they got a guy in to fix it mm. well, why would you get a guy in to fix one crack and then go oh, I'll just leave that one mate mm. if you're going to sign for the ballet you can't sign him when we've still got a leaky defence because it defeats the object of trying to show up your defence. Go get a left back who can defend and then you'll be solid. Mm. It's a team be solid saying the boat doesn't sink. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. I think, well, I agree. That's how I started it off, didn't I? But <laughs> yeah, I, um, I just want to go and get a left back. People are saying Cancelo, and I know why people are saying Cancelo because he's done all right at left back. But what I say, guys, is I always say this, but look at the two games he played in the, in the Prem against poor teams. He played against Real Madrid. And you could argue that he might have been at fault for the first goal because he got skinned. I'm not saying he was. There was other things that happened, but he did get absolutely skinned and didn't offer that much going forward. And against Leon, I thought he was pretty poor. Although I don't think he should have played in that position. So, you know, I don't think he should have played as a wing back. No, no, he got he got, he got done by Pep. Let's right? just go in. Let's just go in. I've said this before. This could be Pep's last season at City. It could be Pep's last season. Let's go in with literally two players in every position who are mint. You yeah, could have Walker Cancelo, Mendy and X on, on the left. you got... Four mint centre backs. You got loads of midfielders. Loads of attack. let's just go in with with the full as well. Not only that, guys. We need to give that a chance. We always get injuries. Always we always get always injuries. get injuries. And I'm just I've not seen enough Cancelo at left back for for me to go. Yeah, because you got to remember, guys. First season, Ben Mendy played nine games. Second season, played like fifteen. And this year, he's done all right, played, played 30. 30 yeah. Although I don't think he's. I think he, he actually played better in them nine games than he did yeah, in this in 30, thirty, which is games, weird. Yeah. But Ben Mendy could easily just go back to single figure, single figures next year. Are you, have you are you telling me that you've seen enough in four four matches or five matches from Cancelo at left back that you're happy to play 10, 15 games in a row with Cancelo at left back? Because I'm not. No, no. And the thing I'm is, not. as well, look at how much Kyle Walker played football this season, and he's, he has smashed it, and he's sick, and he's shown that he can play that amount of football. However. To then say to Kyle Walker, yeah, you're going in again next season. We don't have a backup for you because Cancelo's actually going to play left back. So it's just you every game again for a whole season where we're going to be playing 50 games. Well, that's the, that's another thing. So you're, you're burning right. Kyle Walker out and using him like that. Why not have Kyle Walker and Cancelo? Because next season, I think we'll... If Cancelo is that right back next season, I think we'll see more because of how much Kyle Walker's played this season. Mm. It's going to be, it'll be nice and fluid to have them two both changing in and out, both performing. Do you mm. know what I mean? So you re, then you... Re, uh, lowering the risk of injuries and stuff mm-hmm. and going in with a left back is massively important but then you're saying two two players in a position so that, that again Kev we've seen Kev for the past two seasons has got big injuries and we're like wow we don't want Kev to get injured innit and fair play to Kevin he got injured this season but still smash it on assist innit um, and so imagine say that we went and got Hassan Mouar right he comes in he can play like that Davis overall and say if if Kev gets injured, you've got Phil Foden who can play the Kev role. Because mm. I don't know, I, I don't know why, but I, I feel like Phil Foden isn't a David Silva player. He's not. He, he's the driving player. You know what I mean? He's Phil Kevin, Foden runs. He's Kev. Yeah. He's just. He's Kev, but has. It's mad because he's Kev, but has qualities of David Silva. Yeah, he's a merger, isn't he? He's a hybrid. He, he's, yeah, he's a hybrid of them two, and it's probably because he's learning from both of them all the time. Mm. So he's become like this hybrid player of both. So I, I think we'll see him more like as the Kev role next season. Yeah. No, I agree. I think, like guys, if you're watching on YouTube or SoundCloud, comment, let us know who you want in left back. Do we need a left back? Are you a Cancelo? Do you think Cancelo should be played? If not, let us know who you think that he should sign. I think we do need someone, but yeah, yeah, let us know um, what you think. Right, last topic before we wrap up, and it's staying on transfers, because, you know, now the season's ended, we can talk about transfers. Yeah, big, isn't it? Attacker. This is another thing. See, see, so when he says players, players. a lot of people are saying, it's an attacker, it's an attacker. Do and we then, need one? And the rumours are, it's an attacker. No, we don't need one. We've got Ferran Torres, who can play up top. Hmm. Um, he can play on both wings. And we've got... So we've got Mahrez, Bernardo, Sterling Torres, Aguero and Jesus. See, si. Aguero can, obviously, does get injured pretty much every season. So uh, for me, I'd rather wait till the next season mm. and go all out for Haaland. See, I think we do need one. And this is the problem because I do want Haaland, but I do think we need one. Look, the reason I'm saying this is I'm, I'm a massive Gabriel Jesus fan. Massive. Oh, yeah, massive book. Remember when we were City Eye? I did a massive article on yeah, Jesus yeah. And I loved him. I, I still love him. I think he's decent. But the problem is this season, although his stats are good, he went through that period when basically the, the light was on him. 
And and he needed to come out of them them nine ten games when Aguero was injured. He needed to shine, didn't he? And and not only not he didn't. I don't think he needed to shine. Just come through it, going yeah, he did all right. And, yeah, and saying yeah, yeah. he's still young, he did all right. But the problem was. He didn't. Did he go he, nine games without scoring? Nine goals without scoring. He was making wrong decisions. You know what I mean? There was times where he was not getting in the box. Do you remember Newcastle? I think we remember Newcastle when the the ball was played. I think that was actually when Mendy was putting really, yeah, really good yeah, balls and, in. And yeah, and it was like, how? And Jesus was just not getting on the end of it. And basically, the point is, I can't guarantee that one, Aguero will stay fit next year. Mm. And he, even if he does... How many injuries has this guy had through his career? And this is a bad one. He could come yeah, back. They, well, people are saying that this one could end him now. But this you, could you this could know. be his decline now because this injury that he's got is a really bad one. He, he might this might flare up all the time next season. Mm. So we might not see Aguero at this because he actually had a really good season this year and he was yeah. playing sick. But I think we might not actually see Aguero back at his peak. Well, again. my point is that. I'm not saying we can't rely on Aguero because that's stupid, but what I'm saying is we can't rely on Aguero's fitness yeah. to keep to keep up, right? Yeah, I'm with you on that. And then if that doesn't happen, are we confident in, in Jesus? And the reason I'm saying this is, again, it's the the same situation as the left-back and the Kudabai thing. This could be Pep's last year. Let's give it everything we've got. And at the end of the day, Aguero's probably going to leave after next year anyway. Well, so even if you do sign a Haaland or a Yao Felix or a Martinez and say to him, Right, you're coming in, Aguero's here, you might not get all the minutes that you, you want, but, but next, look, season. next season, Aguero's leaving, because I think Aguero will leave, I think and you're going to be top dog. So I think that, and that, that's good for them as well, because they can come in, no pressure. They can come in, play, come on as a sub, build up, play League Cup games, come in, you know what I mean, build their way into the team, not just go bang straight in. At the end of the day, right, if you're Lotto or Martinez, or Yao Felix or someone, or Haaland... You, do you really want to be coming in when Aguero's left and thinking, oh, I've got to replace Aguero? And then you've got that weight on your shoulders. You've got that massive, massive weight. Or do you want to come in for a year, learn the system, learn the tactics, learn the players? Yeah, because it takes... And, and Pep's system as well. It takes players mm. a while to get used to that. So having that year, it get you into the system. Mm. And then, bang, straight away, Aguero leaves, but everyone's chill mm. because we already have you firing on all fronts. You're ready. You know what I mean? You're raring to go already. Yeah, but I'm, I'm with you on that. But and, and it's not just like obviously we, I'm not saying that we're going to sign a left back and that's it. We're not going to sign an attacker because apparently it was four players. Mm. Apparently there was four more players after Ake. Mm. Well, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens on it. Obviously, we are going to sign more players because Caldine said it. So we'll have to see. Let us know again on that one. What you think? Does City need to sign an attacker, or do, can we wait next year? Do you, do you trust Aguero's fitness to stay through, or do you trust Jesus to get us the goals? It's an interesting one. Um, but yeah, comment down below um, what you think. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Yes. It's been a been a nice pod, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been nice. Isn't um, it? But yeah, we'll be back again next. What is it? Monday. Yes, always Monday. Isn't always it? Monday for the pod. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new smash a like on it so it'll help other City fans get to the channel uh, thanks a lot for watching guys see you later